Welcome to my rather exhaustive installation guide for difficulty immersion quality. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. If I need to upload a revised version in the future, I will. There will be additional videos in the future to actually showcase the features of the collection, potentially some troubleshooting guides. Hopefully you find it useful though. I know that many people do not like to read, thus this video exists. Baldur's Goonsack few things worth noting, keyboard and mouse is recommended, controller should be perfectly functional, it just won't take advantage of some of the mods in the list. Localization will probably be lacking for a great many mods, so the collection is primarily built for use in English. Some of the mods feature nudity, so does the base game, but mods such as body texture replaces and whatnot, during the downloading process you will see nudity, and this is all also why I don't have a link directly to the collection from YouTube and it can be found in my Discord instead. Multiplayer will have extra steps, so this is something people run into quite a bit. You'll both be installed, you're ready to go, you've got all the same mods, you've got the same load order, you've got the same configs, but the host doesn't have this cache. Basically before the host hosts a multiplayer lobby, go ahead, jump into a single player game so that this uh, spell list cache can generate. Basically the only thing blocking you outside of the normal expected stuff, you know, same mod, same everything, that will actually block you from playing multiplayer with this collection. Definitely read about optional mods before installing them, just please do that, because a lot of these come with caveats or they're not intuitive. And then yeah, here's the rest of the mods, I'm pretty sure they're all down here so you can go through and see what's what. If you just wanted to skim my list and you don't actually want to install the whole damn thing, there's that. So first things first, have a clean game install, no dirty crap, if you've modded on it before, if you've done loose files, you've been throwing stuff in there, you can follow this document and try and clean it out real good. For the average user with a decent internet connection, I would recommend just uninstalling the game, then going to the directory where the game was installed, removing any leftover files. You can also do this for the app data folder, at the very least back up your saves though, even on a fresh install, we want to verify integrity, because I've had some users install the collection and then be like, why the hell isn't it working? I followed all of the instructions, you know, all the models are black, textureless, um, yeah, now that they had to do this, even on a fresh download. So, while that's going ahead, we'll go to updates, only update this game when I launch it. That is the best we can do with Steam, as far as just shit canning it updating. When the game gets a big patch, it usually takes me the better part of a week to get a collection update out, so it's important to remain on the correct game version for the collection. With this uh, on only when I launch it, you might open up Steam, see there's an update available, you're gonna come up here, and you're gonna click go offline, and then it can't get the update. You can also, from the game files, you can launch from one of these and it shouldn't update the game, so you can set yourself a desktop shortcut, or you can launch from Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager and just not have it in Steam mode, and launch from there. Alright, we want to make sure we're in DirectX 11 mode. We want to turn off the stats tracking. Before continuing with the installation, we'll want to launch into the game at least once to generate files. There's one mandatory setting in-game that needs to be toggled, which is animation level of detail needs to be set to high for custom heads, hair, and whatnot to show up properly. I really do recommend running the game in full screen. It will just be better performance, generally speaking. Alright, it's time to... Download and install Vortex. Going to assume you've got the .NET requirements and whatnot. Oftentimes you won't have to manually seek out those files. I'm just going to throw it into program files. Extensions updated, please restart. You might have to restart the application a few times. You're going to want to log in to the application with your Nexus account. And before we do anything, we're going to start managing the game first. Here it is, Baldur's Gate 3. If you've got it installed, it should know where it is. Divine Tool is missing. We're not installing this. The lslib divine tool we do not want. You're going to get prompted to install it 
every time you open Vortex with Baldur's Gate 3 managed, we're going to ignore it every time. So, interface. We don't want it to run when we start out a computer. We don't want mods to deploy when enabled. It's going to slow things down if you ever want to make changes disabling, enabling mods, or updating the collection. Um, you can deploy manually, it's better that way. Workaround. Allow sim links without elevation. This might not be on by default, and if it's not, you'll have to restart your computer for it to take effect. So there's two types of deployment methods that you could be using. Hard link deployment it will be set by default. You may as well just use that, assuming that your mod deployment folder, your game install, and your game's app data folder are all on the same drive. Simlink deployment is what you will use if that is not the case. So say you've got your mods download and deployment folder on another drive because you're short on space. Preferably you've got the BG3 install on your C drive with the app data. And then Simlinks can send them over to the other drive. And you should also absolutely turn off the auto export load order because Vortex ain't touching the load order. We don't have the lslib divine tool installed, so we don't need this setting on, it's probably just gonna give an error warning or something. Either deployment method, restart your PC. The default app data paths for the Vortex application for your deployment and downloads folder should be completely fine. I like putting them elsewhere. You can too, so long as they're not in the game folders. You don't shove your deployment folder in your game data folder. You don't put them in the game install. You don't put them in the Steam directories. You don't put them anywhere like that. They belong outside of it. And yeah, that's all the settings. This is where the fun begins, we can finally add it to Vortex. We're currently on revision 70, but I'm going to go ahead and grab revision 69, so that I can demonstrate updating the collection. Go ahead and add to Vortex. Now, you may get a pop-up in your web browser saying, oh, do you want this application to handle these links? You can go ahead and say, basically never ask me again. And then every time you click a Nexus Mods link for a, a download through Vortex, it's just going to happen without a prompt. The instructions currently just consist of all the optional mods, same that you'll find on the mods page. If you've got premium, this will all happen automatically. If you don't... This can be ignored. The reason that this file isn't included is because it's overwritten in the collection by another mod which will be installed later. All of the mod rules will come packaged in. There's a few loose texture file replaces and they overwrite each other. So once the main collection is downloaded, you will be able to install optional mods. I don't recommend just clicking install optional mods. I would say go through and pick out what you actually want. And like I said before, definitely read about them prior. You'll get warned on each one of them of just that. Some of them are going to require each other. So for example, Lodestones has a library mod. Uh, the upscaled armor and clothes textures has two files. One is a pack file, one's the loose textures. And there's just quite a few caveats with a bunch of these mods. Appearance Edit Enhanced has a re-sculpt feature that I just wouldn't recommend using. It can be a bit buggy. Regardless of which mod you use for increasing the party limit beyond four characters, it can have issues. So yeah, just read about them before installing them. If you try and add the optional mods after you've already gone through the load order process, then they'll be showing up in inactive. You can just go get a fresh load order, remove all missing, save, export, just do it again. All of the optional mods are present in the load order. Five hours later. 
I could not find a SpongeBob time card for uh, four hours, but that is about how long it took. So if you don't want to spend four hours clicking shit, then Nexus Premium is worth it to you. Otherwise, you know, just watch some YouTube and keep clicking away. Something that's uh, basically required for the sake of organization is toggling these columns on for uh, the Vortex mod page. The main one I want all of you to toggle on is collection and then over here you can group by collection and as you can see it allows me to just package everything nice and easily. The main reason I want everybody to do this though is you'll probably only have the main collection and unspecified, that's fine. When you update the collection, all of the leftover mod archives and potentially still active leftover mods will be here in unspecified so you'll be able to see the old stuff versus the new stuff. In addition to that, mod type is really useful for checking if mods are set as their appropriate types. So we're done with Vortex for the moment. We can go ahead and grab Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager, link will be in the description. So once it's downloaded, just go ahead and extract it. I recommend putting it somewhere, like on your desktop. You won't need to run any executable files or go through an installation process or anything, it's portable. It won't come with the Orders folder by default, but I'll be showing you how to get one, or you can just make a folder in there called Orders. To start, no mods show up in Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager because I'd previously purged them, which means all of the mods are brought back from the game files. I go ahead, I deploy them, and then refresh BG3 Mod Manager, and then they all show up. So to generate the orders folder and get our first load order, we go ahead and save as. And then upon opening the file, you will find a little bit of text in there. You can go ahead and remove that and copy the load order text from the collection page. Now, preferably, you could just join my Discord and directly download the loadorder.json file and uh, just throw it straight into the orders folder. Definitely quicker, and it's the same process for custom configuration files. But yeah, control C to copy that, paste it in, save it, refresh BG3 Mod Manager, and you will now have a functional load order. First thing you'll be greeted with is missing mods. This will consist of category spaces, which are just dummy files uh, that I use for organizing the load order. Others should just be optional mods or mods from the DIQ archive, which is a secondary collection where I put mods which have been removed. So you will just select remove all missing and then you will go ahead and save the load order. In this case though, I actually had revision 70 load order with revision 69. So the Mods as displayed are not correct here, but the process is the same. All of these red exclamation points sitting on quite a few mods, that is expected for a first time setup. It just means that script extender isn't being detected. You go ahead and launch into the game with mods for the first time, and this will install the script extender. This is also how script extender updates. It will auto update 95% of the time. You can see the console there. You won't just want to go into the main menu, but just make a character really quick, just race through the character creation and load into a new game. This will generate the configs for specific mods. So I've demonstrated the copy-paste method for the load order. Unfortunately that was with the mismatching revisions though. So I'll grab the appropriate ones, both of them from the Discord, and just cut and paste them into the orders folder and refresh BG3 Mod Manager again. Once you have the appropriate load order, you've removed all missing, you've saved, and then you've exported it. You're basically ready to go. The only thing left from here is getting the different config files, which, while optional, I highly recommend it. These two don't go in the load order at all. These three function like override mods. The extra dividers being in here is not a problem. They're just dummy files. They don't, they won't do anything. Your profile should be public. Make sure you export the order, a lot of people forget to. Make sure you're refreshing whenever there's changes through Vortex. In your preferences, you will want to throw on DirectX 11 mode, you can skip the launcher from here, you can set it to launch through Steam, but naturally have your auto updates off on Steam, set to when I launch the game, play in offline mode, uh, 
as needed. If there's a pending update that you're, you're not getting yet, don't screw around with an app data path override. You don't need to do anything with the script extender here because we got one installed through the collection. T-binds or whatever. Do not put on developer mode, it's going to cause problems. Yeah, you don't really need to mess with much of anything in here. For the most part, Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager is just for getting this load order, exporting it to the game, because Vortex is atrocious when it comes to the load order, and the lslib divine tool just makes the program really slow. If you want the dividers that I have in Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager here, you will need to manually install them, preferably through Vortex, from the mod page plus categories by Raisins. There will be zip folders inside of zip folders, so you can't package the all-in-one with Vortex, to my knowledge. Just make an empty collection. I'm just gonna call it Dividers. You don't need to upload this collection or anything. Add all of these to that collection. So now we've got it all just tucked down here, and that's that. So, configuration files. From loading into the game, uh, and actually entering the game, getting past character creation earlier, the configuration files will have been generated, as you can see here. These are all the default configurations, and some of them I have customized for various reasons. And you might not have all of these, because some of them will be optional mods. Some of these are actually yet to be included, but the process will be the same for all of them. So we'll take camp event notifications, for example, and this will just be the same thing as with the load order. We copy it, camp event notifications, config.json, and we paste it over top and save, and that's that. Alternatively, you can come into the Discord and we can just download that same config and replace. Now, I will be adding an all-in-one file here, so that you can just extract a zip folder straight into your AppData local Larian Studios Baldur's Gate 3 script extender folder, and it'll just replace all of them. So, updating the collection. It's rather simple. The most important part of it is that you actually read the change log itself. So, take here, for example, with Revision 70, there's a few things you would have to do for an existing playthrough. There are some items associated with this mod that have been phased out over time, and then there's some current ones that have been moved to another mod, but I don't really want them in the collection. So those items need to be deleted in the game. Generally speaking, mods that change things that already exist within the game are not near as harmful to remove as, as mods that add things into the game. There's items in the game, that a mod has introduced, and they exist in your game world, in your inventory, maybe even in vendors' inventories, they need to be destroyed. Uh, summoning the tutorial chest is a good way of doing it. So you summon the tutorial chest, you throw it in, and when the tutorial chest disappears, it just goes to the abyss. All those items are gone. Uh, this was a bit more of a special case, with adding a Lithid powers overhaul to. You have to enter this command to respec everybody's tadpole abilities. So yeah, it, it just varies, so it depends on the revision. But if, say you're down here on revision 65, and you want to update to revision 7, You've got to take into consideration all of these. Generally speaking, something that's consistent throughout is that you will need to respec certain classes, subclasses, so if they're in use, you would have to respec. Now, if you're trying to jump a lot of revisions, I would just say respec your characters. Just all of them. Just turn everybody into a level 1 barbarian so that you can just jump through a bunch of these revisions. You can pickpocket withers after respecing with no consequences on a failed pickpocket and just get your money back. If you're using the Appearance Edit Enhanced optional mod, you can just respec through a spell. Now I've already done all this on my saves, so I can just show you the standard fare updating process. So we come here, it's got a nice, nice little thing showing you that the update's ready. It's gonna put a poorly, uh, <laughs> poorly frame change log there. You're just going to select remove all. You're always going to select remove all. Just going to install now. Oh look, we're back at it again.
So, it appears that optional mods don't automatically get updated, or they may not. This was not something I was aware of, so if you were using the optional mods, get the updated versions. For this demonstration, we have all of them. Now, some old versions will be archived, and they'll be underneath the main one. And you can go through and get rid of these if you wish, just to save storage space and keep things clean. Whereas others, due to changes in the mod files, may not show up as an option like this. They will show as a different mod entirely. Because we have things organized appropriately, and we're grouped by collection, we can see these leftovers. Thankfully, all of these are uninstalled. If you didn't select remove all, there may actually be active mods here still, and that could cause problems. It would start displaying conflicts, maybe warn you of redundant mods. When you go into Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager or you refresh it, it would do the same thing, conflicting mods, if they had the same UUID. You don't want mods that have been intentionally removed hanging around either, because mods that are over here, just hanging out, they can still take an effect in the game's files. So you can't just leave stuff in the inactive section unless you know what it's doing, you know that it's safe, like all of these. So just like with the initial setup, you're going to refresh Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager after you put the new load order in, matching the revision that you've updated to. You'll remove all missing, assuming that all the missing mods are expected to be missing, just optional mods that you're not using. You'll save the load order, you'll export it, should be good to go. Sorry about the variance in audio quality. This video was made over the course of a few days. I didn't initially have a script for it, so I just kind of filled in the blanks. I'm putting it out because I'll probably end up making another one in the future. As some of y'all may know, the Nexus development team is working on a new mod manager, which will replace Vortex. I think it should be called something like Nexus Mod Manager 2 Wabber Vortex Boogaloo. If you enjoy the collection, make sure to endorse it. If it's working for you, give it the thumbs up for the success ratings. It all helps out. You can catch me in Discord basically whenever if you run into issues or if you've got any questions. Yeah, that's about it. Have a good one.